Over the past few days, the stock market has been down pretty bad. So in this video, I want to talk about what is going on in the stock market. Should you be concerned? How am I playing this in my personal portfolio? And we will also be talking about my portfolio, how it performed this week as a whole, and how it's projected to perform over all of 2022. I want to be as transparent as possible. I think it's really important especially in the world of finance and investing that YouTubers and content creators really be transparent to a certain extent. And I want to show you guys my dividend portfolio because I know if whenever I first started getting in the stock market, like it really gets confusing. It really does. It's a lot of the stuff can be confusing, especially when it's a brand new slate. And so I want to be as transparent as possible and enough of that good stuff. If, if you enjoy dividend investing and if you want to Get transparent information make sure to subscribe to this channel if you're new thank you so much for clicking on the video now let's get into the video now i am recording this at 11:09 p.m eastern time on thursday because tomorrow i have a really busy day i have a lot of stuff ahead of me i'm starting a new company so there's a lot of different things going on in my life but that does not mean i'm going to stop making videos on the channel Videos will still be coming out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so don't worry about that. I'm still providing all the value that I can, but let's get into this weekly and kind of just an annual outlook on my portfolio. Now, let's go talk about this. We have Apple, which is down 1.67%. A lot of healthcare stocks are down pretty bad. You know, you got United Healthcare down 4%, CVS down 3%, and a lot of different companies are down. Netflix down 2.51%. Tesla down 2.15%. A lot of stocks are down, but also that does not mean that a lot of stocks aren't green. Financials are doing pretty well. As I've said multiple times on my channel, I do think that financial stocks are going to be doing really well. Look at these. These banks, USB, doing pretty well. Look at all of these large banks doing pretty good. Financials, I do think, will do very well over the next few the next year, especially just with rates rising, it could benefit banks to a certain extent. Now let's go ahead and talk about what is going on in the market. Sorry, got off a little, a little off track there. NASDAQ sinks more than 3%. Bond yields rise amid Fed minutes release. Now what we'll see right here is we got the Dow Industrials, the SP500, and the NASDAQ. All of them are down pretty bad. You got the Dow down 1.1%, the S&P down 1.6%, and the NASDAQ down 3.3%. Now this was published yesterday on January 5th. But there's a lot of different things going on now. I just highlighted a few key points that I want to point out so I don't get too long in this video. I want to make sure you're using your time correctly. But the yield on the two-year treasury note, which often rises when investors anticipate tighter central bank policies, reached its highest level since February of 2020. What was February of 2020? That was pre-COVID because COVID originally started and kind of started to catch its trend and we saw the COVID crash. In March of 2020, that's crazy. Like, 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 just don't even think about stocks for a second. Like, think about it. That was March of 2020. It's already 2022. Like, this stuff is, it's insane when you really think about how fast time goes by. So let's read on the second highlight. Contributing to the murky picture, a mixed economic recovery complicated by fast-moving Omicron variant of COVID-19, which is making it harder for investors to consider whether to readjust portfolios toward value stocks. So that kind of brings me to another position on how am I playing my portfolio? Let's see. I have talked about this actually a lot on my channel. On I used to be a heavy growth investor and then I started my dividend portfolio. And I see that dividend and more value stocks, especially strong cash flowing stocks, will perform very well over the next year, few years, especially with new policies that we're seeing in the economy. Now, what we're looking at is my total portfolio right now. We'll look at the activity, the dividends, and the expected activity over the next year on this portfolio. But what we'll see is this past month, I'm still performing pretty well, up 3.32%. In the past week, I am down 1.01%, which is $108.79. I don't let any unrealized gains. I mean, I love unrealized gains, and I don't let any unrealized losses really affect me because I'm strongly convinced in the companies that I am invested in. Now, if we go look on the past day, this Thursday, I'm up 0.03%, which is $3.65. So I guess green money is better than no money. Now, if we go look on my entire portfolio, here's how it has been performing. Let's go over this entire just past week. 
tech and cloud computing is down pretty bad because as, as interest rates rise, your more tech growth kind of focused stocks and all of these stocks in this portfolio do pay a dividend at the current time, they will usually have, it's going to make borrowing more expensive, you know, higher interest rates, you're going to, have to pay more interest rates on your debt. And so it makes it harder for these growth companies to actually grow. And who benefits from these banking stocks, people who make money from interest. Now we're seeing restaurants and food is down, which is actually only Starbucks, we got real estate down. Consumer and stores, which is things like Home Depot, Lowe's, Costco, up 1.21%, banking up an income fund, which is just some high income dividend yield ETFs, which is up 0.46%. Now let's go ahead and look at the activity that happened in my portfolio. This morning, I had six buys of $249.89, which I actually put in just a $250 buy order on M1 Finance. We'll look at what these are in a second. Uh, I deposited $500 into my account. I thought that it was important for me to put some cash in into the account just as I'm seeing stock kind of come down and I want to increase my yield on cost. And the only dividend that has been paid out so far this week is from JEPI, ticker J-E-P-I, which was for $1.44. Now let's go ahead and look at what I bought. Now I put in this port into my portfolio on M1 Finance. That's one thing I really love about M1 Finance is how easy it is to use. Once you build a fund, and if you want to go get access to my portfolio, literally use the link in the description or the pinned comment down below. You can just go look at it, see what it is. It's 100% free to go look at. You can download it, use it for yourself, edit it, however you want to do it. And if you want to use M1 Finance and you have not made an account already, make sure to sign up using the link in the comments or the pinned comment or the description down below. It'll say dividend or it'll say M1 Finance. And you just click that link and you sign up and you deposit $100 by using that link. You and me both will get a free 50 50 five zero dollars which is a lot of money now let's go ahead and talk about this we have 25 dollars being bought in broadcom ticker avgo 32 dollars in igv iShares expanded tech we got nvidia 15 dollars microsoft being 98 dollars and 82 cents bought apple 49 dollars bought and starbucks 30 dollars bought really like to see all this stuff just adding as much money to these portfolios so that the next time they pay a dividend guess what i'm gonna get paid out in income and Let's go ahead and talk about my biggest holdings. Now, Microsoft, I used to be up pretty well. And now I'm actually down on Microsoft. Microsoft has not been performing too well over the past few days. If we just go ahead and look at Microsoft stock, check this out over the past five days. Going up from $342, if we go to the past month, all the way up to $342, back down to $317. So a lot of different things are happening on this stock, you know. Just kind of the whole market sentiment, I want to believe, is the whole main reason. They still have a dividend yield of 0.72%, and I have strong conviction on Microsoft. I don't see this company going anywhere in the short term, I mean long term, in a bad sentiment. I do believe in this company very, very much, and I will continue to add to this position as I really do believe in this company. Now let's go ahead. We see Apple, SPHD. Now my main focus on this portfolio is to start aiming on more dividend growth stocks rather than high yield. And so what I've been doing is just aiming to get more growth so that my yield on cost will increase. Now, if we go look at my portfolio, it has an average dividend yield of 3.37%. This is on the website, Track Your Dividends. I am not sponsored by them. I have like no sponsors, uh, which is okay. And then it's just a free website to use. I really like to see. And they, I have a yield on cost of 3.55%, which I really like to see already as my yield on cost is continuing to come in. My annual income for this year is expected to be $366 of dividend income. That is expected to come in if I make no more buys, if I just chillax and don't add any more money to my portfolio. However, I do have plans to get this portfolio to a lot bigger than just $10,854 over the next year. So hopefully this number will be a lot, a lot bigger than just $366. My goal is to make this at least... $1,000, but I'm very open-minded when it comes to these type of things. So I'm aiming for one to $2,000 over the next year to get this annual income. You know, $2,000 would be great. $1,000 would be great. Any number would be great. Now let's go ahead and talk about this. This is just my upcoming dividends expectations for the year. We talked about it, $366. And for the week, I have some more dividend payments. It's $6.81 coming in on January 6th, which should have been today. None of them did translate, and $10.21 tomorrow. So some really solid payments. We means we got Jeppy, which came in already, Beachy, XYLD, QYLD. These are all for this week.
Now let's go ahead and calculate how much is this going to be. If you take all that, that's going to equal $18.46 of dividend income for the week. $18.46 that I made this week for literally doing nothing. So that is the power of dividend stock investing. And that is a little update on my portfolio. All this money is being reinvested to pay me more money in dividend income the next time. So if you did enjoy this video and you like dividend stocks and dividend investing, make sure to subscribe to this channel. You turn on those post notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos coming out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you so much for all the support you guys have been giving me. The channel is doing really, really well. And just leave a comment below how your portfolio has been performing if you want to, you know, as the market's been going down, what you plan on doing. I would like to hear you guys' input. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video, and I will see you at the next one.